God, it's brilliant. Now listen to this. I'm sure you've been hearing a lot over the past couple of weeks about how great Operation Mincemeat is. And I am here to continue this praise because, oh my God, I went to see this musical and I just completely fell in love with it. Just everything about it, its style, its story, its characters, its comedy, its music, everything felt very fresh and new and engaging and so well done. So why exactly did I love Operation Mincemeat? Why is everyone obsessed and talking about this musical? Let's find out. But if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie. I talk about theatre. I do reviews, I do discussions, I do video essays. And if any of that sounds interesting to you, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me out and helps out the channel. I also want to turn your attention quickly to my channel memberships. Channel members get exclusive videos, including a new series on the channel that I have literally just filmed called Make It A Musical, where you will give suggestions for things that should not be musicals. And I'm gonna try my best to make it into a musical, give you the design, foundations, and how I would make it work. I just did one on Stephen King's It, and it is beautiful. I actually would like to see it. So if you are interested in that, and you are in a position where you can help support the channel, you can go and join by hitting the join button down below. But let's talk about Operation Mincemeat. Operation Mincemeat is based on a true story. It is World War II, and we are currently losing the war. The British army needs to invade a very specific part of Italy, but there are way too many German soldiers to do that and it would be an absolute massacre. So the British spies need to come up with a way to move the German soldiers from Sicily to Sardinia. And they do this by using a dead body to trick the Germans into thinking that they're going to invade somewhere else entirely. This true story is ridiculous. It's bold. It was a weird idea. And it is absolutely genius to turn it into a musical comedy. There are so many weird details with this story and this musical leans into it completely. It retells this story incredibly well and it's very open to people who don't really know too much about it. I mean, I went in knowing literally the bare basics of what I needed to know about this story. And I found it really easy to follow. It goes for it step by step, and it does it in a really fun and engaging way. Because these characters are so over the top and exaggerated, and the ridiculousness of it makes it feel like nothing else that I have ever seen. On the surface, it's a story that, well, it doesn't really feel like it would work as a musical, but Spitlip have done a really, really good job at developing it and highlighting the ridiculous nature and playing with the characters and exaggerating them in just the right elements to make it really work in this style while not compromising on the story elements and the actual truth behind what happened. It gets its comedy completely right. It is an unbelievably hilarious script. It is witty, it's fun. I don't think there was a single punchline in the show that didn't get a chuckle out of me. From the more physical comedy to the longer sequences that they do, the various one-liners that come so quick and fast that sometimes you're laughing at one joke and they've already got another one out, it keeps up at you with the pace. And the comedy is just so strong throughout. It also does something that a lot of musical comedies can't do, and it bakes punchlines into the actual songs as well. Getting a laugh during a song is incredibly hard. It's something that a lot of musical comedies do actually struggle with because you're not really inclined to laugh during a song. But all of the comedic songs in Mince Me work so incredibly well. And this cast completely understand the style and demand of a piece of theatre like this. I would also like to say on a personal note that I really appreciate that this show can be funny and not punch down. This show uses a lot of gender blind casting and I'm very used to seeing this used to, you know, mock gender non-conforming people, but there's not a single joke in here that punches down and the gender blind casting is used 
really effectively, really respectfully. Another great element of this show is its staging. I love how they've managed to take this show, put it onto this bigger stage. I mean, this is still one of the smaller West End playhouses, but even in this slightly bigger space, it still has that fringe style to it. The set is quite simple, but it's got these little touches that just shine through and kind of remind you in little points during the show that they've got this bigger budget behind them without losing its charm that it had in its previous engagements. These little touches like LEDs on the back wall or the pieces of set that open up and reveal doors, the bigger set pieces that are used quite sparingly, and obviously the glitzy finale sequence that just goes Balls to the wall, so much so that I do not want to spoil any of it, but the entire finale sequence? Genius. I think it does manage to maintain a lot of this charm still because of its very small and tight-knit cast. There's still only five actors in this show, all consistently multi-rolling, and the staging that they use in the direction is great. There's lots of physicality for these actors to play around with. The choreography matches the style really impeccably. And match that with this really great set design, and you have a very visually interesting show. Let's talk about the music a little bit, because this is very unique. It has this blended style between what you typically expect from, you know, a 1940s set musical, but blended with a little bit of rap, a little bit of modern pop, which makes the show feel stylistically different, but still kind of fitting within that period in certain ways. I'd probably say it's 1940s with a modern twist. And I must say, I am obsessed with this score. It is all I've been listening to for the past couple of weeks. So much so that I've learnt the fast bit in Dead in the Water. Don't believe me? <clears throat> I wish I was a maggot, or a tadpole, or a termite, or a wasp, I don't know. Something like a star, small pupate, go legs, wings, or gills to escape this hell that I'm living in. Wait, maybe I think big, maybe like a lion, or a blue whale, hippopotamus. No, don't be ridiculous, this is the problem. God, like, I, 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 it is ingrained in my mind because I've just listened to it that much. I have listened to it that much. It has been on constant repeat. And I think that proves that this is a good score. <laughs> It starts out very, very strong. We get a row of some of the best songs in the show. Born to Lead is a very strong opening number. Then you have God That's Brilliant, which is this fast-paced, boppy song of several ideas just being thrown about at once, all in their kind of comic ways. The melody just gets so ingrained in your head. You've got a great I Want song in Dead in the Water, which... I've already proved that I, I know, so <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> All the Ladies is really fun. It's a song that feels very modern, with it playing with the ideas of feminism and, and talking about how women stepped up in the situation when a lot of men were having to go and fight to take these roles and to take these jobs that they've always wanted. The show also has a song called Dear Bill, which just smacks you around the face with pure emotion. It comes very out of left field, and it catches you off guard. A very human moment in the show. There's so many great songs in this show. Ballad of Willie Watkins is probably the most 40s out of the entire score, and it's fun and boppy and it's silly. Useful is such a great Act 2 number that really keeps up the pace. Making a Man is a longer sequence made up of so many different parts of songs, but it's it's so good. This score is so good. This entire score is so varied and fun and different, and it's so musical theatre and so poppy and classic and ah! I love it. 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 I, it's so good. It's so good. It's so bold and different and Funny, it's so fun. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's It's been on repeat, as I said. I've not listened to anything else. I just, Operation Mince Me all day, all night, inject it into my veins, you know? And then we get to talk about this cast. They are so tight-knit. They are all jumping between character to character. There's such variation in every single role that they're playing. Everyone gets their moment to shine. Natasha Hodgson 
plays mainly Ewan Montague. He's this very egotistical, pompous man. He's the confident one out of our two leads. And Natasha plays it in this perfectly over-the-top way. From the moment she starts in Act 1, she just absolutely kills it on stage with this clear presence and complete commitment to this role. David Cumming plays Charles Chumney. He's very much the heart of the show. He's the one you're rooting for. He's a little bit of an underdog. He's a bit shyer. And Cumming gets the physicality so perfect. Well, also, I'm in so many moments to show off exactly who this character is, especially in songs like the I Want song, Dead in the Water. Zoe Roberts plays a vast variety of characters, and every single one is such a highlight. We have Colonel Bevan, who's probably the straightest character that she plays, leading a lot of the operations. But then she also gets to play around as Hazelden, this kind of useless... British spy living in Spain. And there's this absolutely amazing sequence in Act 2 that I, I don't even want to spoil, where she just absolutely gets to kill it with the comedy. She also gets to play Ian Fleming, a role that she plays in one song in the show, but stands out so much because of the witty script and the references to things that we know that it even gets a callback in the finale. Jack Malone continues the trend of gender-blind casting playing Hester, who is played with such sincerity and believability. Malone gets the most heartfelt moment of the show, which completely broke me. But he also gets to play around with the more camp characters in the show, like Bernard Spilsbury, where he comes in and he's just this complete over-the-top character, or Willie Watkins, where he gets a very similar thing to do, and just steals the show at the start of Act 2. Last but not least, there is Claire Marie Hall, who plays Jean. Jean is completely determined to prove herself and prove her worth, and she has a really great character journey throughout the show, as well as building such a great relationship with Hester. Their chemistry together is really fun to watch. And Hall and Malone get a really great duet together called Useful in Act 2 that just lifts the show. I cannot sing praises for this ensemble enough. They completely understand the show. A lot of them, you know, are the people who wrote the show and developed it. And you can tell that they've all been on this journey together for so long that they've developed this tight-knit relationship. And it's just a joy to watch them do their thing on stage. If you are going to see anything this summer, make sure it is Operation Mincemeat. I have not been this impressed by a new musical in a very, very, very long time. This has quickly risen to the top of my all-time favourite musicals lists. There are very few shows that beat this. It's unique, it's drop dead hilarious. It is everything a musical comedy needs to be. It is everything a musical needs to be. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you miss this, you are truly missing out on some of the strongest theatre that I have seen in a long time. And to think this came from an 80 seat theatre and is now playing the West End is so brilliant to see because these type of stories are quite rare when it comes to new British musicals. But what do you think? Have you seen Operation Mincemeat? Are you planning to see it? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me out and it helps out the channel. There's some links to my other videos on the screen right now and a link to my Instagram if you'd like to drop me a follow over there. But that's it for me today and I hope to see you next time. Bye!